Hey guys, George of Soundtracks here. This week we're going to talk again about our Dynamic Digital Exhaust. Now Dynamic Digital Exhaust is one of the really cool features that sets our Tsunami 2 and now the new Blue Nami apart from other sound decoders. Now today we're going to talk a little bit about calibration, how to get it set up so that you can have the best experience when running your trains. So let's get started. Now guys, first off, we're going to talk a little bit about what Dynamic Digital Exhaust is. Now, Dynamic Digital Exhaust is a term that Soundtrax has used for many, many years, going back to the original DSD-150 decoders. And what it's doing is it's dynamically changing the exhaust tone and the exhaust timber based on what the locomotive is doing. Now, this feature goes back to the steam decoders, where you put a little bit of pressure or you start encountering a grade, and the chuff sound would get louder and more intense. Now what we've been able to do with the Tsunami 2 is we've now been able to refine how that dynamic digital exhaust process is reading the load on the motor and now we can get a more precise measurement so we can actually cause the diesel engine to notch up and also gain intensity to help give you a more enjoyable experience while you're running your locomotive around the layout. So first off we're going to go ahead and take this locomotive. Now we're using a Blue Nami here and with the Blue Nami we're going to go ahead and just use the screen on our tablet right here. We're going to go ahead and start moving in the forward direction. Just a couple of speed steps. Now you hear the diesel engine notch up, but now when I put my finger on the locomotive simulating a load, you hear no changes. The diesel engine continues at that same notch, which is notch 2 as it's going uphill, downhill, around the corner, no matter how many cars it's pulling. Which means it's kind of a monotonous experience because the dynamic exhaust allows that to change to simulate the work that the engineer is doing in the cab, adjusting the throttle and so forth to get power to carry that train around the layout. Now, to do this, in our Tsunami 2, there's actually three CVs that we want to address. First off is CV 2.503. And what this will do is you'll do this while you're setting your locomotive running at speed step one. And when your locomotive is running, we set 2.503 to a value of 255. And what this does is this will actually interrogate the power consumption of the motor. So you're going to want to do it on straight level track, light with no freight cars, so that you get a baseline read on the motor. Now because we're doing this at speed step one, it's going to plot a point on the graph. And on that graph, it's going to say at speed step one, this is how much power the decoder is using at speed step one, which is the first speed step. Now the next one we're going to set is CB2.504. Now we're going to set this while your locomotive is running on your track. And this can be a test layout like we have right here, or you can do it on your layout on a flat level track. You're going to run it somewhere between speed step 20 to 30, somewhere at a nominal speed where you normally run your locomotive when you're running at speed. Now you're going to set CD2.504 to a value of 255 again because what this is going to do is this again interrogates the motor and internally it'll plot a second point on the graph. So let's say it's speed step 20 you're using this much power. Now what this will do is this will actually draw a line internally to the decoder and say this is what my expected power consumption is throughout the entire speed range. Now, doing that, the decoder uses that as its reference. So when you need more power to keep the train running at the same speed, the line reference in the graph and in the decoder will now actually maybe you're using this much power. So the decoder sees that difference and says, okay, I need to notch up the diesel engine this much farther to simulate the work that the engineer would be doing. Now, the last one is going to be CB2.512. And what this does is this adjusts the load sensitivity. Now on a steam locomotive, I actually recommend using a little bit higher value, um, 0 to 255, where 0 is off, 1 is the lowest sensitivity, 255 is the highest sensitivity. So I recommend using a higher value for our steam locomotives since they tend to run independently. Now our diesel locomotives, however, I usually recommend a lower value. And the reason is, is that way you have your locomotives together in a consist will more fluidly notch up and down together as they share the load. Because it's a low sensitivity, you'll get a little bit of that experience, but you won't have them notching in and out of sync with each other. Now the cool thing is, is with our Blue Nami, 
it actually does the calibration work for you. So you don't need to do any of those CV adjustments. So right now on my tablet, and you can see the tablet and the screen here in the corner, we're gonna go ahead and go to our settings. Now when I go to settings, you'll see the menu pull up on our app. And at the bottom, we see dynamic digital exhaust. And we see here a brief explanation of what we just talked about. And then it talks about how to do the instructions for the calibration. Now the cool thing is the app's gonna do the work for us. So we go ahead and push begin calibration. Now we are in a small studio area, so I'm gonna be grabbing this, but ideally you don't wanna be grabbing your locomotive while it's doing the calibration. But in order to keep the locomotive on camera, I'm gonna go ahead and hold it a couple of times. So we're gonna go ahead and push begin calibration. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna start by setting the momentums to zero, and it's gonna start moving our locomotive at speed step one. Then it's gonna interrogate. Now you're gonna see it's gonna start going a little faster. It's gonna quickly do an interrogation, and then it brings the locomotive to a stop. And as you can see here in the screen, it automatically sets your CB2.512 value to a value of 16, which is relatively low, and then restores our momentum values that we had set in the decoder. So now we'll go back to our operation screen. So again, I'm gonna to go to speed step to but now we hear the diesel engine notch back down to idle because it's not working very hard. But now when I put some pressure on it, say we're encountering a grade simulated by my finger, now you can hear that locomotive notching up as it's working harder against my hand to maintain the same speed. So while the wheels are slipping on the rails, you're actually hearing that motor working harder to maintain the same speed and hence the dynamic digital exhaust kicks in and causes the diesel engine to notch up. Now when I release, you hear that diesel engine drop back down to idle as now it's basically just coasting down the track. Now for you Android guys, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the app on the Android tablet. Now this is a Samsung tablet. We have our app, we're connected to our Milwaukee Road 18. Now we go down here to the gear setting, and down here at the bottom you see DDE, or Dynamic Digital Exhaust. We click that, and we hit the begin calibration, and you notice our locomotive is actually starting to move at speed step one. Now it's gonna move at speed step 20, or 30, and then it runs and now it's done and you see the same process kicking in here with the Android version of the app. Now the one thing about setting those CVs is if you were to go back and read CVs 2.503 and 2.504, you're actually not gonna read them as 255. The calibration process sets a value in there and that's what corresponds to the plots on the graph that I showed you. Now, when you go back in, if you feel like you want to tweak it manually, you can certainly do that by setting those CVs a little higher or a little lower based on your perceptions as your locomotive is running around the track. Now, when it comes to the sensitivity, now as I've done here in the Blue Nami, the app automatically sets a value of 16 into the decoder for you, but you can change that. You go back in and set 2.512, you can go higher, lower, depending on again on what your experience is. So run your locomotives around the layout, see how the DDE is performing for you, and then feel free to tweak it again back and forth as you see fit. The other thing is you can always go back in and recalibrate again. So if you've been running for a while and you don't feel like you like it, go back in and recalibrate it again and you may get a slightly different value. Now, it may be the same value, but this gives you the opportunity now to go in and change it as you see fit. Now for more information on our Tsunami 2 and Blue Nami features as well as information on our dynamic digital exhaust, be sure to visit our website at soundtracks.com. Be sure to check out the respective sections on each of the products to see the features. And don't forget, Tsunami 2 is factory installed in the Athens Genesis models, so this dynamic digital exhaust feature is already built in. All you have to do is set the calibration so that your dynamic digital exhaust will work for you. Now, thanks for watching. Be sure to click the like and subscribe button down below and also click that notification bell so that you can be notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.